Now we get into retention testing, like the chin strap and the buckle system. Um, they all three have a retention test. DOTs is a static test, a, just a certain amount of weight on the strap for a certain period of time and, and a minimal measurement that it can stretch. The other two are dynamic where it yanks on it. Uh, Snell and ECE both have a roll off test to make sure that the helmet will not inadvertently roll off your head. Uh, ECE pushes it a little bit further. They check the abrasion resistance of the retention system. They also uh, check for inadvertent release of the buckle. Now, Snell says that it cannot inadvertently release within the standard, but, um, but EC actually has a test that, that proves that it does or doesn't. So uh, again, one of those things that I appreciate about ECE. Um, ECE does a shell rigidity test. It can only flex so much. Now, Snell insists on a pretty rigid shell, but they don't have a specific test on that. Um, okay. Other than that, I mentioned uh, EC does batch testing on their shields. They also require for every 3,200 helmets that have been certified ECE that you've sold, you have to resubmit and test again to make sure that you are still complying. Uh, Snell and DOT both go into the market and they buy helmets off the shelf and they send them, uh, Snell does it in-house in and uh, DOT sends it to specific labs here in the US to test to make sure that it meets. Now, uh, what's interesting about that, first of all, they do. I, I will tell you, they go out and buy helmets and, uh, and they do test them. Uh, interestingly enough, DOT's failure rate for an impact test is 0.0%. No failure. If you say it's gonna meet the standard, you better have met the standard or you're gonna be talking about recalls, which they don't specifically order, but it goes through government channels and ultimately that's where it leads. Um, now, having said that, that's why I think you should buy from a reputable brand, whoever they are. Do they have in-house testing? If not, do they use quality third-party testing? Are you able to prove that? Um, there are companies, I see it more often in half shells than I do anything else, that say, oh, we have the smallest, lightest half helmet on the market today. Well, every time we see those come up, my partners and I within my company go out and buy them and we send them off to our factory. For your information, we have never once had one pass. Uh, unfortunately, because they're not reputable, when they get caught, uh, often they bring them in through Canada. They're all labeled, they look legit, but if they get caught and they prove that they aren't passing, they just shut the company down and start a new shell company, no pun intended, and put a different brand on it and keep selling them. Uh, that's not what I would want on my head, and, and part of the reason that I'm doing this exhaustive discussion of these standards is I don't want it on your head. If you're going to put on a safety product, it should meet a, a specific standard and you should be able to rely on that. So we've covered a lot of ground here. I appreciate the patience. I hope it's been valuable and uh, stay safe out there.